Hey friends, it's Mrs. Walker. For our lesson today, we're gonna to continue working with equivalent fractions. So our learning goal for today says, I can generate equivalent fractions using fraction models and the number line. So the materials that you'll need for this lesson are your dry erase board, your fraction strips and paper from lesson 21, our previous lesson. You'll need three additional fraction strips, so make sure they're the same size as the fraction strips from yesterday, which measure four and one fourth inch by one inch. You'll need some crayons to do some shading, some glue, and some scissors. All right, friends, so make sure you have all those materials before we get started. Okay, so look at your paper with fraction strips from our previous lesson. So here's what it should look like. What fraction is equivalent to one third? So here's one third. What fraction would be equivalent to that? Yeah, two sixths. See how they have the same amount of space on our one hole for each fraction strip? All right, so what fractions are equivalent to one half? So here's one half. Look at all of your fraction strips, which are equivalent to one half. So pause the video, because you really kind of got to think about this a little bit more and look closely, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so here, two-fourths is equivalent. Then I can keep kind of going straight down and saying, oh, four-eighths would also be equivalent to one-half. Now, I'm going to have to skip over one-third, because if I wanted to do one-third, it's going to kind of cut that second third in the middle, so that one won't work. But I can do three-sixths. That will also be equivalent to one-half. So notice how they all take up the same amount of space on each fraction strip. All right, so look at your fraction strips and see if you can find other equivalent fractions that are shaded or not shaded. So go ahead and pause the video. You're gonna draw and label them on your dry erase board and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. Okay, so I have two halves and four fourths, right? Those are gonna be the same. They're equivalent to each other because they're both one whole. One half and one half is two halves. That's equivalent to four fourths, which is equivalent to eight eighths, which is the same as three thirds and six sixths. Okay, so all of those holes are going to be equivalent to each other. Oh, three-fourths. Friends, look at these. Maybe this is one that you didn't come up with. So if we have three-fourths, what would that be equivalent to? Look at all of our fractions. Can it be equivalent to any of the halves? Can it be equivalent to any of the eighths? How about the thirds, the sixths? Yeah, it can be equivalent to six-eighths. Okay, so those two are equivalent to each other. How about two-thirds? What could be equivalent to two-thirds? Take a look and see if you can find a fraction that would be equivalent to two-thirds. Yeah, four-sixths. Those are equivalent to each other. Do you notice a relationship between the numbers in these fractions? Like you have two-thirds and four-sixths. Do you notice anything with those? Well, you might be saying three is half of six, right? And two is half of four. Well, that's true, right? So if you make two copies of two thirds, then you get four sixths. I see what you mean about like by doubling them, but it's not really copies when you look at the fraction strips. Two thirds are larger than six, or thirds are larger than sixths. So the numbers double because you're cutting each third into two equal parts to get sixths. But that actually makes the pieces get smaller, even though the number of pieces is doubled. It's still the same amount. So you're not really doubling the fractions. It's because you're cutting each one of the parts in half is what makes those helpful to be equivalent. 
All right, so let's look at some more. All right, so here we have three fourths and six eighths, okay? Those are also equivalent. Does the pattern you notice apply to these fractions too for these ones? Yeah, it sure does. Four is half of eight and three is half of six. So because we're taking those smaller ones and partitioning them into more pieces, we're able to say that those are equivalent fractions. All right, so let's look at two thirds and four six again. What fraction would we get if we doubled the four and six in four six? What would the new fraction be? Yeah, it's gonna be eight twelfths, right? Because if we double four, it turns into eight, and if we double six, it turns into 12. All right, so fold, now we're gonna switch and do something different. We're gonna take out those three fraction strips that we have and we're gonna fold them into thirds, sixths, and twelfths. And then you're gonna label the unit fractions. Now you might be thinking to yourself, whoa, whoa, Mrs. Walker, how on earth do I fold it into six and even twelfths? Okay, you could probably do thirds, even six you might be able to do, but twelfths, well, we're getting crazy with all that folding, right? So here's how you do it. So to fold thirds, right, you fold into three equal parts. Then to fold into sixths, you have to fold into three, into thirds, so those three equal parts, keep that folded, and then fold in half again. And then when you open that, you're going to have sixths. Then to fold into twelfths, you're going to fold your strip into thirds, keep it folded, fold it in half again, and then fold it in half again. Okay, so keep it folded the whole time, and you're going to fold in half twice, and then you'll have twelfths when you open your strip. So leave these directions up here really quick. Pause the video, fold your strips into thirds, sixths, and twelfths. Draw a line down each part so you can know and see where the parts are and then label each unit. So one third, one third, one third, and then do the same thing, one sixth and one twelfth for all of those. And then click play when you're ready for the next step. Okay, so I'll leave those directions up. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so here's what you should have, okay? Thirds, sixths, and twelfths. So you're gonna shade two thirds, four sixths, and eight twelfths to compare, because we're trying to see if eight twelfths is equivalent to two thirds and four sixths. We already know that two thirds and four sixths are, but now we're trying to see is eight twelfths equivalent also. So pause the video, shade two thirds, four sixths, and eight twelfths, and then be ready to answer if all of those are equivalent. Okay, so pause, do some shading, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, make sure you pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here's my two thirds. My four sixths would look like this. And then my eight twelfths would be eight equal parts. So is eight twelfths equivalent to two thirds and four sixths? Yes, it sure is, right? They will take up all, or all three of them take up the same amount of space on the fraction strip. So what did we do to the equal parts each time to make the number of shaded parts and the total number or, and the total number of parts double? What do we have to do? So to go from one third to six, what did we have to do? We folded that paper in half, right? So we cut them in two, really. Thirds get cut into two to make six and six get cut into two to make twelfths. So did the whole change? Nope, it sure didn't. We just added more equal parts. Okay, so what happens to the shaded area from two thirds to four sixths to eight twelfths? It stays the same, right? It's not changing as we're shading those parts because they're equivalent fractions. So the fractions are What's that new word that we've been learning about in these two lessons? Equivalent. Good job, friends.
All right, so now you're gonna glue these fraction strips and keep them with your other fraction strips on that paper that you have, and then label the shaded fractions. So pause, do some gluing, label the shaded fractions, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so the first one is 2 thirds, 4 sixths, and 8 twelfths. So make sure you have those as your labels. All right, so now we're going to switch gears and look at fractions in a different way. Okay, so these three holes are the same. Name each shaded model. Okay, so this first one, what fraction names this model? Yeah, one third, right? It's three equal parts, one is shaded. All right, how about this one? What's the fraction to label the shaded parts? Two sixths. Okay, how about this one? Three ninths, you got it. Okay, so now we're gonna try and figure out if these are equivalent, but we're gonna use our number line to prove it. Because maybe when you look at these, you don't think that these might be equivalent, but or you, or you do, or you're just not sure. So let's jump over to our number line that we've been practicing so much with to model these three fractions, okay? So I am going to use three different colors because we're gonna use one number line to label thirds, sixths, and ninths. Okay, so I'm gonna label thirds in yellow first. We're gonna start with our endpoints of zero and one then I'm gonna split my number line into thirds. Okay, that's yellow. Then I'm gonna label those. So we have zero thirds, one third, two thirds, and three thirds. And I'm gonna cross that one off because I already labeled where the thirds are. So one third we already have labeled. Now I'm gonna come in and do my sixths. Now remember, we learned in the previous one for six, we're just cutting the thirds in two, right? But don't forget to still label that one part there because that's part of our sixth. Okay, so there's our six. Zero six, one six, two six, three six, four six, five six. Oh, and six six. Cross that one off. Now we're gonna do ninths. Now remember when you're splitting into nine parts, you need to have eight lines, right? It's always one less, okay? So let's do that. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we have our ninth there, okay? All right, so one ninth, two ninths, three ninths, four ninths, five ninths, six ninths, seven ninths, eight ninths, and nine ninths. So cross that one off. So we're gonna come back to our question. Are these fractions equivalent? Find all of those fractions, where are they? If they're all on the same point on the number line, that means they're equivalent. If they're not on the same point, then that means they're not equivalent. All right, well, here they are. Look, I have two sixths, one third, and three ninths all at the same point on the number line. So yes, friends, these three fractions are equivalent to each other. Okay, so make sure that when you're labeling all the, these different fractions on one number line, that maybe you're using a strategy like different colors or, or something along those lines to be able to help you to be able to see those different fractions. All right, friends, so good job today generating equivalent fractions using the fraction models and the number line. Please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, friends.